Welcome back to the world of Eternum. Very special thanks going out to Amazon Game Studios today for giving me the opportunity to cover the details of the system early. Really appreciate them giving a simple guy like me the chance. And I also really appreciate you all taking the time to watch these videos. Hopefully you've been enjoying them or learning a thing or two. And so today, we're going to be diving right into the details of the arena system for New World. Now as some of you may know, we have actually covered a little bit of the arena system before, most notably during the New World Reveals the Arena video. But this time around, we're going to be taking a much deeper look into the system as a whole, and the mechanics plus lore of the creature we'll be fighting inside it. With no further delay, let's go ahead and get right into this. So the information starts off by giving us a backstory on the creation of these arenas. It's said to be a construction built by the group called the Ancients, which just like the name suggests is the ancient civilization of the island. The true purpose of these arenas have been lost to time, but through unknown magic and rituals, the ancients were able to bend the laws of Eternum to bind some of the most powerful creatures within them. Like we talked about before, to get into these arenas we'll need to get what's known as an arena key. This item drops from different enemies around the new world. And not only that, but once we get one, it comes with coordinates we will need to go to for teleporting into it. Inside the arena itself, we will come across one of Eternum's most powerful creatures, the Spriggan. Born of the land, it is a primal expression of the power of Azoth. This champion just so happens to be a part of the faction known as Angry Earth, which is known from previous developer diaries to house creatures like Dryads. This seems to suggest that both the Ancients and the Angry Earth were allied with each other or affiliated at one point in time, which does pique my lore curiosities, but more than that, we've already seen what appears to be the corrupted version of the Spriggan in both the trailer footage and the screenshots of the invasion. So with that, we'll have a much better idea of what to expect from the Angry Earth Spriggan going into this. The blog describes us as fighting the Spriggan alongside our parties, which from previous footage and articles seems to be a party of five. With our party, we will only get a set amount of time to take down the Spriggan, and if we don't win in time or the Spriggan stomps out our entire party, the entire arena will end. And the result of this will be us being teleported back to the ancient pillar at the beginning of our encounter, which means being forced to march all the way home via the Walk of Shame. Before we even decide to take on the Spriggan, we have a couple methods of preparing ourselves. This blog states we will want to repair our gear, which does suggest an equipment durability system in the game, as well as craft anything we might need, such as consumables like healing potions so that we might survive the deadly encounter. Now the first part about this blog is that it does tell us what kind of reward we'll have a chance at getting if we defeat the Spriggan. The reason this part is interesting is because like we've seen in the previous gameplay, we know that there are now different rarities of the gear, and so far, we've seen both green and blue show on certain weapons already. But this blog tells us that success in the arena awards high quality equipment, but in rare cases can also award legendary gear with powerful equipment traits. Not only that, but some of the most powerful legendary gear in the game comes from winning in these arenas. Now so far I don't think we've seen anything that screams legendary when it comes to the rarity in the footage. We've seen green, which most would classify as uncommon, and then blue, which is usually known as rare, and even gray, which would suggest common gear. But for legendary, I would imagine for that to be colored as red or orange. And it says that these items will also have powerful equipment traits. We've already seen weapons with elemental effects to them, like what appears to be a darkness element, or even fire, but maybe there are other types of traits that we don't even know about yet. That's something we'll have to learn more about as time goes on. Now this arena mechanic as a whole is very interesting to me. The reason for that is because since the game itself seems like it's going to be mostly open world, the fact that they seem to be implementing instance content on top of that means that we might see a mixture of both in the future. I think it'd be really cool if they developed other bosses and created mini dynamic events similar to this arena, like an area we could go to on the map after unlocking the item to enter and challenge ourselves to a real dungeon. Or perhaps if we farm on certain mobs and get a dynamic event based drop, we could travel to a location and travel into something similar to a Hellgate like you'd see from Albion. After they explained these arena details, they decided to sit down with the art and design team of Amazon Game Studios to talk more about what it took to bring the Spriggan creature to life. The first question they asked had to do with, what were some of the early concepts the team drew inspiration from? In the earliest concepts for the Spriggan, they designed it as an earth elemental, a spirit of earth, 
wood, and stone, and proceeded to draw descriptions that show an early folklore from multiple cultures. Initially, they had designed it with the tree stump as its core element, but over time the creature grew more into a boss, which caused it to get a taller and more agile form that relied less on armor and more on brute strength, mobility, combat skill, and its supernatural power. When it comes to the design philosophy when they were creating its combat style, they said that when they created the Spriggan, they wanted to create this powerful being in which the root of its power stems from the earth. Now this power is also corrupted and very angry, so they wanted to make something that was large, frightening, and conveyed an angry power in all their attacks. That actually explains a lot of it though, because even though it was the corrupted version, in the trailer footage I could really feel the raw anger behind those swings that befell the poor explorers. It almost felt like maybe the Spriggan had their baby Groot stolen from them or something to that degree. And I gotta say personally, I can totally empathize with that because let's face it, if you had a baby Groot and someone decided to kidnap it, we would all show those people absolutely no mercy. They designed the Spriggan to have a body of wood, earth, and stone and that was created by an evil force of corrupted nature. And with that, they also put a lot of thought and effort into how the Spriggan can use its body, such as growing roots and vines for his attacks, along with the large club we've seen it use. And the Spriggan will even have the ability to heal itself, which this is starting to get to one of my favorite parts about the blog, and that's the mechanics. They say right after this that they also came up with the idea of giving him a shield of roots that cover him when he starts to regenerate. And they expand on this in the next section when they talk about tips and tricks we should know before encountering the Spriggan itself. One of the biggest tips they can give would be to not go alone. Having a well-rounded group is very important to this encounter. They say that having melee DPS is definitely needed, but having at least one ranged and one healer build is key. Now for those of you that don't remember, back in February during the press media event when all those interviews were starting to come out, one of them, specifically the MMORPG article, had actually mentioned that for the sword and shield weapon, players would be able to specialize as a tank and support their fellow teammates. Along with that, we do know that healing is a thing in the game, supported not only by the blog but also previous articles we've covered as well, and of course we have DPS. It seems like we're starting to move towards a holy trinity sort of setup for the game, and I do hope that means that in the future we'll get even more content that complements this sort of system nicely. It's also stated that the Spriggan himself is also capable of breaking through our blocks, and this is because of their high damage against stamina, which is confirmed to be what we'll be using to dodge and block these attacks. From the way they describe it, the Spriggan also sounds like he might have access to some ranged abilities. If you take a look at these series of gifts, you can see the Spriggan execute a gap closer to try and catch those of us out of his immediate range. On top of this, like we mentioned before, even though he is capable of breaking our blocks, it does appear if you use sword and shield that you do stand a chance for repelling his blows. We can also see at several points during this that one of the members seems to be spewing out a lot of nature-based or life-based magic. I think we've got a big idea on what that one is, but we'll touch more on that once we have an official confirmation. And we will be touching on this specific GIF in just a second here, but the Spriggan's range capabilities, it looks like it's also able to execute what's known as a vine arm attack. I think this mechanic alone could be what sets this creature apart from just being a regular mini boss. I could only imagine that the damage on this move would end up being quite high, but at the very least it does seem dodgeable. The only thing is though that he swings his arm in an arc motion which ended up hitting even the guy in the very back over there. So even if we're far away, we'll still have to be careful of this boss. Also like we mentioned earlier, the boss can completely stop what it's doing and begin to regenerate itself. When this happens, the boss is going to throw up what's known as a healing shield. While this shield is active, they will also be at their most vulnerable. This is the point where all players in the party will need to focus DPS to stop the boss's regeneration and break him out of the shield early. This along with the next part has me really excited to not only fight the Spriggan but more bosses in the future of the game. I've always felt that it's super important to have in-game content that is made more challenging based off the mechanics and AI themselves, as opposed to inflating the mob or boss health but leaving it in its default state. So far from what we've seen, the mobs themselves seem to react to us in battle the same way we will for them. And knowing now that the first boss we'll be coming across in an instance like this will also have multiple mechanics is a good sign, and I really do hope it continues. On top of that, the last thing they mention as their favorite move or animation of the Spriggan is known as the Vine Arm Attack. They state that the animation team spent a lot of time getting this mechanic to look great. This process also included working with the tech art and VFX team to get the vines built with special adjustable shaders to create the growing and retracting effect. 
and when I read this, I couldn't help but think of Teenage Groot enveloping Thanos in vines. Either way, I'm actually pretty stoked to see what becomes of the arena content. I know that when we discussed it before, I also mentioned that it would be nice to see some PvP arena sometime in the future, or even open world points of interest that we could fight over like I dived into on my last video, but this could be a really big step in the right direction for what it means we could see later down the line. We've already seen that they might have up to 12 months worth of content in their roadmap, so perhaps something we've already discussed, including more boss fights may be in it. But with that, I'll go ahead and pass it off to you guys. How are you feeling so far about this arena mechanic? And more importantly, do you think this is something that could potentially get tedious after a couple of runs? Or do you think this is something you wouldn't mind grinding for if or if not there are other bosses implemented in the future? Let us all know in the comments below. And with that folks, thank you yet again for taking the time to check out this video and many thanks to Amazon for giving us this opportunity to talk about this even earlier. Hope you all have a wonderful night or day and farewell.